A warm welcome to you for the Day Evening News Update for Thursday, May 13. Our top story, police are continuing investigations into a robbery at the First Caribbean International Bank in Wilde that occurred around 12.15 today. Acting Inspector, Police Public Relations Officer Rodney Innes provided an update at the scene. The assailant, or one of the assailants, someone entered the bank, approached a teller and presented a note and demanded cash in, in specific denominations. Um, the teller did as she was trained to do and handed over a certain amount of cash. Okay, took the cash, placed it in the bag, casually walked out of the bank. The search is now on for the culprit who was disguised as a woman. It's said to be a male who was dressed in female clothing, um, a red dress, a straw hat, and he wore a mask on his face and a pair of sneakers. Um, he's believed also to be wearing a gray long sleeve shirt underneath and he's carrying a handbag. Uh, that's the description given to us. That's a great description that we would want to circulate. I mean, it's still very early in our investigations, but I'm sure that someone in such a busy area might have seen something. Ever how small it is, it will work. We will gladly take your information, just contact us. You can even call the 211 line and we take the necessary information. Um, what's good about this, thus far as nobody has been physically injured, nobody reported any physical injury. They're traumatized and they're being treated by you know, the staff and counselors. Things have been put in place by, by the bank. Government today announced a further easing restrictions, which will take effect next Monday on the COVID 19 Directive number 10. Church goers will be allowed to sit three feet apart instead of six feet. Fraternal organizations, private or social clubs, civic associations, and political organizations will now be able to resume meetings provided members adhere to the protocols of mask wearing, sanitization, and physical distancing. The maximum number of persons who may attend, regardless of the capacity of the meeting place, is limited to 100 persons unless special exemption is granted. The drive-in and cinemas may open every day subject to the existing agreed protocols. Photographers and videographers will be allowed to operate every day. The new directive will cover the period May 18 to June 7, 2021. Prime Minister Mia Motley has lauded an independent report which has suggested that the COVID-19 pandemic could have been averted had speedier action be taken. Among one of the several recommendations of the Independent Panel for Pandemic Preparedness and Response is for wealthy G7 nations to commit $1.9 billion to the WHO's COVAX facility to provide vaccine support for low-income countries. In hailing the report as timely and excellent work, Motley said it was exactly what was needed to win the battle against the respiratory virus that has so far claimed over 3.3 million lives. She again called for a global summit to address these issues so that countries can act to stop people from dying and get on with the business of development and recovery. The psychiatric hospital is hoping to resume vaccinations this week. Word of this from Director David Leacock, who says the facility, which is currently battling an outbreak of the virus, has been making headway in vaccinating patients and staff. We've had um, a very extensive campaign. Over 70% of our patients internal would have been vaccinated with the first vaccine already. And about, just about half of those would have had their second vaccine. That will be temporarily paused because of what's going on. We're hoping to restart that sometime this week and have all persons that had the first vaccine receive the second vaccine within the next few days. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust.
to regional news, the health ministry in Trinidad and Tobago has been forced to add more than 100 beds to the parallel health care system to treat COVID-19 patients. But Health Minister Terence Dale Singh warns that's not the answer to the worrying COVID crisis. As the daily COVID-19 death and infection rates continue to increase, the Ministry of Health has moved to provide additional space to treat persons who have contracted the virus. Minister of Health Terence de Alsing toured the Point 14 facility on Thursday and outlined the care expected to be given at each of the units. With these type of facilities at UTT campus in Valsain, DB and here, we can add now 130 beds to the hospital grid. What that means is that our occupancy rates will drop significantly. It also means that we can have more space at our secondary and tertiary hospitals. The health minister cautioned, however, more treatment facilities will not solve this country's current COVID-19 crisis. That adding more physical beds is not the solution to this pandemic because there is a limit to not only physical space, there is a limit to the human capacity, the nurses, the doctors, the lab techs, everyone. So the solution to this acute phase of the pandemic, again, is for the public to exercise extreme personal responsibility. Further afield, Israel fired artillery and mounted more airstrikes on Friday against Palestinian militants in the Gaza Strip amid constant rocket fire deep into Israel's commercial center. And Israeli soldiers, ground troops namely, had actually entered uh, the Strip. But at this point, Fra France 24 uh, has spoken to eyewitnesses on the ground, people who are saying notably in the Gaza Strip, civilians, journalists, that they're not seeing any Israeli movement inside the Strip in neighborhoods such as uh, Shajaya in the eastern part where Israeli troops had entered back in 2014. Soldiers can be seen, Israeli soldiers, but on the other side of the fence that separates the enclave from uh, Israeli territory. So at this point, again, there is no independent confirmation of a ground incursion or invasion of Israeli troops inside the Gaza Strip. However, it is possible that this intensification of air raids, uh, bombings coming both from land and sea could perhaps be used in order to pave the way for, sword, for soldiers to eventually come in. But um, time will, of course, tell us whether or not that is the actual case. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.